hey, here's the video as promised or the information that I, that I promised I would share on Instagram. I'm gonna put this segment of answering your questions first and then following the answering of the questions, I've got the, the video that talks about my leg injury and how it happened and what actually had to be done. A lot of questions about that. And some of these questions are about that too. So I'm gonna read them. I've just compiled them all together, the ones I could find in your messages and in, your, in the post comments. If I missed your question and you're looking for an answer, I apologize. I've tried to answer people individually too, but it's possible I'll miss some. And feel free to ask me again and I'll be happy to answer it in the future. Anyway, thanks again for everybody that's interested in this stuff. So, did you break your leg? No, it's not really a break. So I twisted my ankle, and when that happened, it happened so hard and so fast that, I may be saying this wrong, I think it's a tendon in that area and cartilage that pulled against the talus bone, and it pulled a chunk of that bone out. So loose pieces of bone were then in my ankle joint. Eventually, they got loose from the tendon because I was still walking on it. I walked on it immediately because I thought that would be good. Um, and so those loose pieces of bone had to be removed from the joint and then the hole in my talus bone had to be patched with some bio putty or bio cartilage. They like fill it in the way you'd fill a hole in sheetrock or drywall. So it's interesting. Did I have to have a bone graft? No, but my doctor said at the Orthopedic Institute in Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute, great place. They take care of our professional football team there, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, he said if I didn't act soon, I'd make it worse and they'd have to harvest some material from my knee to fix the problem. So I didn't want to have to have two joints recovering at the same time, so I went ahead and had it done. And on pain meds, do I have any pain? Um, yeah, I'm in a little bit of pain. By the end of the day, it's bothering me. The more that I prop it up, the better it is. Um, I'm supposed to keep my nose above my toes, but it's hard to do that. Um, I'm working from home. So, um, and I'm mainly on Zoom meetings and doing work remotely. I've been doing that since June. So I didn't want to keep taking pain medicine because it makes me feel a little bit drunk. My daughter, uh, who is a nurse, told me that I didn't sound drunk or anything, but I just didn't want, I need to have my thinking clear while I'm doing that. So I'm not taking pain medicine at all right now. Um, I looked at your old post, you've lost weight. Are you sick? This is my favorite question, by the way. No, I am not sick. I lost weight because I needed to lose weight and I made myself quit eating as much. And between November and January, I lost about 35 pounds. However, I'm gaining a little bit of weight back during this recovery and I gotta fix that. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna restrict what I eat and how much I eat. How long have you had the Land Cruiser? I had it, I've had it for four years. When I bought it, it had, um, 350,000 miles on it. I don't know what that equates into kilometers. Now, uh, because that's the next question, how many kilometers does it have? 414,000 miles now, and that's 666,000 kilometers and some change. That's the original engine, original transmission, never had to be rebuilt. So I'm very proud of it. I love the thing. I got it for a great deal. I did a lot of looking around and shopping and um, I was specifically looking for Land Cruisers and other um, four-wheel drive vehicles that have solid axles because I like solid axles. I may switch from that thinking one day, but that's what I like right now. Um, neither of those have been rebuilt either. Transmission and engine are original, never been rebuilt. What got you into four-wheel drive? I used to be a rural mail carrier here in the United States, and uh, you have to supply a vehicle. You deliver out of a vehicle that you own, and I had roads that were rutted and muddy and you know not paved, gravelly, corrugated, all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to get a good four-wheel drive vehicle. I found a 1987, um, I'm gonna change hands here, 1987 Range Rover Classic that um, I loved. And I drove that thing successfully on the mail route, very little expense, I bought it for $1,000 in 2004. And eventually I sold that and got a different vehicle and I missed it since then. Since then I've had other four wheel drives. I had a Jeep, uh, a 2006 Jeep Wrangler. I love that vehicle. I no longer needed that vehicle because I quit being a mail carrier. Uh, then I bought a Land Rover Discovery II. Hated that vehicle. It was not off-road capable at all. Got rid of it. And then I went a few years without having uh, any off-road vehicle. And finally, um, I gave my little commuter car to my daughter 
and I got the Toyota Land Cruiser. So, and I made it my daily driver. So since I've had it, I've driven at least 60 miles every day round trip, in some cases more than that. In some cases I've had to make two trips, plus miles while I was on the job, um, and it's been a good vehicle. I've had to fix some things, but overall, my cost has been significantly lower than if I had a brand new car payment. So it's been a good vehicle. It, it's problematic, and it's gotten to the point that I'm tired of fixing it so much, and I still don't feel comfortable enough to jump in it and drive out west, which I wanna do one day, but I still love that vehicle. All right, so let me look here. Okay, so now we're getting into some YouTube questions. Where did you get the idea for the parodies? Well, I got my Fire to Fort t-shirt in the mail. There's an Instagram post about that. And as a joke, really, I just said, hey, I ought to make a parody. And immediately, Harry Fisher responded. He said, do it. And so I got to work on it. I thought I'd just make like a little Instagram uh, length video initially, but I had so much fun thinking of ideas that I decided to make a full-blown YouTube thing. And... Uh, Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing it. Harry was extremely nice and cordial, and it really seemed like he thought it was funny. He keeps telling me that. And uh, he promoted it, and that got a lot of views. So he talked about it in his, one of his videos, and that's what led a lot of people to watch my video. And it can, has continued to go up since then. I mean, it's still small potatoes in the world of YouTube, but it's been fun for me, and I've gotten to interact with a lot of interesting people, so that's been kind of neat. Oh, um more about YouTube. Do you know any of the other YouTubers? No, I don't know them. I've never met any of them, of the people that I've parodied for sure. They're in Australia. I've never been to Australia. There's some questions about that coming up too. I do know a couple of YouTubers, mainly they're people I already know who have started YouTube accounts, the most successful of which is uh, Brad Bear of Copper Creek Cuts. Check him out. I'll link him in the comments. Um, he makes videos about his lawn service business and they're actually a lot of fun to watch. And as you could tell from the number of views, he has, he's very successful at what he does. So check that out. Also, I got a young friend named Jordan Roberts who races RC cars. He's just started a, a YouTube channel. It's called Team Roberts Racing. I think it's a lot of fun to watch that. And I'm hoping they continue to do what they're doing and increase their video skill and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. I did meet a YouTuber here in Florida. His name is Kevin. He's from Overland, Florida. He's got a pretty big following. He does a lot of camping in the Ocala National Forest. That's different. I go to the Osceola National Forest. Both of those are Native American names. They think Ocala is really a Mayan name, but either way, uh, that's where those names come from. And um, anyway, he's about three hours south of me. I did meet him in an event. He's invited me to go camping before. We've just never been able to connect. I did tell him to come up to the Osceola National Forest and I'd show him around. But then COVID kind of put everything into a, a tailspin so we didn't get to do that. But pretty nice guy. Check him out. He does he does some really cool videos in the area that he camps is not dissimilar to mine. He, he knows some really cool places. Also does boating and some other stuff too. Um, why do I wait for permission to do the parodies? Because I think it's respectful. That's it. I don't want to, I'm not going to do it unless somebody tells me I can do it. I did that teaser of the one that I was trying to get permission for. I'm not going to name the guy. Um, and he hasn't responded, so that's fine. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave the teaser up unless somebody tells me to take it down. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do one without asking for permission and getting permission. Why do you like Australia so much, and are you coming to Australia? I, that's a video that needs to happen separate from this. I've loved Australia since I was a little boy. I've talked about that briefly. Um, and I, there's a lot more to it than what I explained in that Bear Monday fish cook-up video. Uh, would I come to Australia? Am I ever going to do it? I would love to come to Australia and go there on a trip. And when I go, it's going to have to be for a significant time period because I, there's a lot of things I want to do there. And it's a lifelong dream. So I'm going to look at doing that one day. However, I was supposed to take my wife to Hawaii for our 25th wedding anniversary. And COVID interrupted those plans. Instead, we remodeled our kitchen. Made some videos about that too. I'm, I got to take my wife to Hawaii before I can ever talk about going to Australia. L seriously talk about. But I do look for uh, rentals for touring vehicles kind of regularly to see where I can get one. I'm just kind of looking at it. But I got to take my wife to Hawaii first. She's been wanting to go there. That's something we're going to do. Okay. Um, why don't you do a live show? This question was funny to me. And actually, three or four people have asked it. Uh, because who would attend? You know, if I did a live show, how many people would even would even attend it? 
Now, I would do it, and I think I will, because three or four of you have asked. I did join a live show with Paul from Camping Down Under, um, and that was a lot of fun. Thank you again, Paul, for asking me, and it was nice to meet some other people on there as well. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fun questions. I had to get up at 3 a.m. to join that meeting or t that, uh, that call, uh, that live show, but it was fun. So uh, tell me, what's a good time that I should do it? Um, I would probably do it to try to match up a good time for Australia because most of the people who ask me are from there. I think you guys have an easier sense of humor than Americans because you think I'm funny. But anyway, um, I'll do it. I, I would love to do that. Maybe what I could do is try to get some other people to join that you'd be interested in seeing. I don't know if that'll happen because, again, I'm s small potatoes on this YouTube business. Um, those are all the questions I have time to answer right now. Again, the thing about Australia, that's a separate video that I'll make. If you have questions for me about any of that, put it in the comments or message me, and I'll make another video. Now, I said this video was only going to be two minutes. Just way exceeded that at this point, and I'm not going to edit it at all. I'm going to upload it, attach it to that other video just like it is. And following this, I give you some details about my, my ankle injury, and uh, there's even a couple graphic pictures in there. Well, not too graphic, just sutures in the bone fragments. But anyway, so check it out. Thanks again for all the people who are continuing to check on me. Thank you for the people who are following me on Insta or on YouTube. There was one other question, and I'll do it right now. Why is 1,000 subscribers the magic number? Because that's when YouTube can become more than a hobby for you. It actually is at the point where you can start making some revenue. And I think it'd be fun just to, to see where this could go. My social media content began as a university marketing class project that I was assigned to do. I had to start a social media account and to see what you could do with it. And I actually, believe it or not, have gotten a few free things given to me for my cruiser, even at a very low number of followers. I think because um, it required a little salesmanship and I have customer service and sales skills in my background and what I do now even. So I think that helped me but I ended up being very successful in the second semester of that class. First semester, all the, the teenagers killed me. Second semester, I was number one, and it was this Instagram account that I have about the Land Cruiser that put me there. So that's how I got started. And now I'd like to take it to the next level. It's been fun to watch it grow. I wanna see if I can get the YouTube thing to grow too. And obviously, if you can monetize it in some way, it can help fund you know, more camping adventures once my leg is better. So thank you again. Watch the video, the rest of the video that's following this one. Thanks a lot. If you haven't already, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'll put a link for that right here. Well, I wanted to go in November. Couldn't go. I wanted to go in December. Ha! Couldn't go. My work was too busy. I wanted to go early in January. Maybe like New Year's weekend or... Um, Martin Luther King weekend because I have an extra day off. Couldn't go. Finally, right at the end of the month, I'm going for a quick two-night camping trip. Very remote, very socially distanced. Gonna be fun. So the camping trip started fun. I cooked up a great breakfast. This, in fact, was the only video I took. Then I sprained my ankle and had to ice it down for the rest of the trip. No other photos were taken. Yep, that's it. So, I twisted my ankle over the weekend. This is the healthy ankle, and let's make this out of the way. This is the hurt ankle. I think they look pretty good, both of them. What do you think? Four weeks later, This is a healthy ankle. This is what my ankle looked like when I had an MRI. Eight weeks later, here's the hole in my talus bone that had to be refilled. Here's the bio putty they put in the hole. These are the bone fragments that had to be removed from my ankle joint. These are the sutures that had to come out. What a pretty sight. And this is what I'll be wearing for the next several weeks. And no walking. 
for at least six more weeks.